What story do you tell when you have to leave your loved one for a short amount of time or a longer amount of time? We go through so many emotions and for me, I want my heart to close down because I just don't want to feel the loss and the pain. So what do I do to keep my story and connection with my husband going? I leave little love notes all over the place at the farm. He enjoys finding them and then I see when I come back for a visit, he's taped them all over the place. A little irritating to run into these little pieces of I love you, but nevertheless, I know the impact these little notes have had on him. And what do I do then when I'm in Seattle? I clean my house. I nest. I make it simpler. I get rid of things that we no longer need so that when my husband comes back home, the homecoming is different because the home has been changed and rearranged. Our stories interconnect and intertwine. The intimacy grows. I'd like to know how you keep your story going when your loved one is gone from you. Please record or write your story to me. Send it to Beth at BethLord.com and I will put it in an ebook for all of us <clears throat> so that we know our stories are nourished in our right heart memories. Thank you. So I finished up with the video and went inside and found my husband vacuuming the house with mm, an angry sort of tight sense of who he was. And I know that's how he's dealing with the pain of me leaving today. At one point in our marriage, not too long ago, I would have felt guilty for his feelings. And I would have, I don't know, done something really beyond superhuman feat just to please him. Yes, women, I have found my feminine strength and I am not letting it go. So I didn't take his feelings personally. <clears throat> I am empathetic, but I didn't take on his feelings to process. They're not my feelings, are they? <clears throat> Logically, I could see he was cleaning the house. So I said, honey, what can I do to help? Oh, nothing. And I said, no, honey, I can do something. What can I do to help? I said, I can clean the bathroom. I said, just tell me where the cleaning supplies are. Oh, he stopped the vacuum cleaner. Don't you know they're in the kitchen underneath the cabinet? I just listened. I let go of all of my thoughts. I could say like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm getting ready to leave to go on an airplane. I can't remember where you put the cleaning supplies. Oh no, I didn't do that. I just watched him and he got out the cleaning supplies and then we went into the bathroom and he started cleaning. I took his hand and I said, honey, I will clean the bathroom. So he let me be. I know now that for the rest of the day, he may not be in the best of moods because this is our story too, the pain of losing one another again. What is your story? What do you do when you leave the person you love? I'm appealing to women and men in this video and our feminine side that gets hijacked 
all the time by the masculine, dominant, domineering energy in both of us. It's taken me a lifetime to appreciate both of my energies, but coax my feminine out. I do that with my writing and in all other expressive forms. This is where I am me. I am me stories pound me too. Yes, I've been there. I've been there most of my life not feeling worthy of being me. My self-care journal goes into that a little bit. And if you want that self-care journal, just email me Beth at BethLord.com and I'll send it to you. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Those are triggers that are difficult for us to leave, for us to know that we are loved just for being who we are. Nothing special. Forget the degrees. Forget the superhuman behavior. You are loved just for who you are. This farm in Oklahoma, my husband's farm that has been in his family since the Oklahoma land run. But this farm has been here for me because it has a space I need to let go of my burdens. It's like the Camino. Oh yes, I'll talk more about the Camino some point in time, but the farm supports me just as much in being me. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I am connected to her and grateful for all that she has given me. It was in the fall 2014 when I came back from my second Camino that I found how important it was to capture our stories and put them into a thin, easy to read book. It's where I found Finding Otis, my very first book. Every time I read it, I cry because it was so transformational for me. If you want to read it, just email me, beth at bethlord.com, and I'll send you the ebook PDF. So even with this visit to the farm, the farm has given me more of who I need to be. I tend to be shy. People knowing me, I'm sure, laugh at this statement, but I am an introvert, especially when it comes to right heart, memory, stories, and feelings. But this time at the farm, I really got that you need to see me and know me and trust me in all forms, from videos to my books to slideshows to Instagram and Facebook. This is not necessarily easy for me, but if I don't do it, how are you going to know that you can do it? Being naked is being authentic is being whole, is being what we need with one another. So here I am. So this time the visit to the farm gave me the realization that I just need to put myself out here in writing, in video, in audio so that all of you knowing your stories, wanting to capture your stories, have someone you can trust. Me. I'll listen to you. I'll listen to your stories and I'll capture your voice in a book. So how do you trust me? You trust me 
because I am showing you that my stories have given me permission to be whole, to be myself in my right heart memories. And your stories can help do the same for you. I am excited in what I'm finding out about me and how I'm drawing people to me. It's not a fancy marketing plan. It's something that doesn't resonate with me because I have to do things pretty organically and naturally. So here I am, six and a half years with this company, but really prepared now to meet you, listen to you, get your stories down, because we all have so many amazing stories to tell, all of us. They're ongoing and they can nourish transformation, self-discovery, legacy. The sun is up high, it's almost noon, and we have to book to go to Wichita so I can get a flight to Seattle. Grant and I had breakfast, which was good because we moved through the emotions and then just sat and talked about who we are as people and creators. He has to build here on the farm and I have to write your stories, my stories, thoughts, poems, anything that makes us feel in our right heart memories. So as I leave the farm, I wonder how come I didn't take full advantage of being here? That's how it always is, isn't it? Full advantage, full feeling, whole heart, wholeheartedly, right heart memories. See you soon.